Hello booktube, my name is Carrie, and today I'm going to be doing the mid-year freakout tag. So the first question is, what is the best book that you've read so far this year? Now in terms of the best book that I've read that's really stuck with me, I would have to say probably Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. That one had a lot of personal significance for me and it was a very cathartic reading experience. In terms of a more recent book that I have read that I just haven't had a lot of time to sit with, but it certainly feels like it could be one of the best books I've read this year. I would also have to say Love from Mecca to Medina by S.K. Lee. Similar to Everything I Never Told You, this had a lot of emotional attachment for me. So yeah, I would say it has to be between one of those two from what I've read so far this year. Question number two is, what is the best sequel you've read so far? And I haven't read a ton of sequels this year, but I'm gonna actually say The Dragon Republic by R.F. Kuang. This is the first book in a long time that hasn't suffered from second book syndrome for me. This story expanded on the world and gave me the character development that I really needed instead of just focusing on like a new plot line. This story did a great job of tying together the two other books, both the one before and after, and it was such a strong sequel for me. Question number three is, what is a new release that you haven't read yet? And for this one, I have so many options that I could pick from, but there are three that are big releases this year that I've really been wanting to pick up. The first is Kaikeyi by Vashnavi Patel, which is inspired by Indian mythology. Then there is The Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah, um, which is a Middle Eastern inspired, I believe, heist novel. And the third is Black Cake by Charmaine Wilkerson, which is a literary fiction novel about, I believe, intergenerational trauma. Question four is, what is your most anticipated release for the second half of the year? First is obviously Babel by R.F. Kuang. I'm really looking forward to seeing her write in a new genre. And the other is As Long As the Lemon Trees Grow by Zulfa Kato. And this is about a Syrian girl who is in pharmacy school as the civil war breaks out and she ends up transitioning into a volunteer role working for a hospital and is debating if she wants to leave Syria or continue to stay and try to help people. Question five is what is your biggest disappointment of the year? And I have actually a couple options for this one because if we're speaking in terms of a book that I came into with high expectations and I just didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I would, I would definitely have to say The Burning God by R.F. Kuang. That one was a bit of a letdown in terms of ending the series. However, if we're talking about a book that I went into with high expectations and completely and absolutely hated it, I would have to say it's kind of a tie between The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho and The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood. Both of these had similar issues for me. There was no character development in either of these stories. The writing was not great. And also, I just don't really understand why people found them both so amazing. Question six is, what was your biggest surprise? And I have two answers for this one for very different reasons. First is If I Had Your Face by Francis Cha. This is one that had a lot of mixed reviews on Goodreads and I wasn't really sure what to expect going into it. However, I found this to be such an amazing socio-cultural commentary on South Korea and it had really strong writing as well. And my other choice for this is going to be Ace of Spades by Farada Abike Emize. This is a YA social horror in my opinion, although I know it's often labeled as a mystery. I say that this is a surprise because I had no idea what this novel was about. In my February wrap up, I ended up editing out a very basic summary because I realized when I finally read the synopsis that I had no idea what that book was about. Question seven is, who is a new favorite author, either new in terms of a recent release or new to you? I would have to say R.F. Kuang for sure. I would also add Disha Filia because of her short story collection, The Secret Lives of Church Ladies. I was really blown away by that. I think that especially because it's a short story collection and it was so well written, that makes me really excited for what she's gonna put out next. I would also have to add Catherine Locke and Akwike Emeze. Both of them had really unique writing styles and played with magical realism and speculative fiction in ways that were new to me and I look forward to exploring more of their stories. Number eight is newest fictional crush. And for this one, I'd have to say Zafir from Take a Hint, Danny Brown. I just loved his character. He was a character who had gone to therapy, was a big reader, 
everything about him was adorable. Question nine is who is your newest favorite character? And for this one, I have to say Altair from We Hunt the Flame. I loved his character. He had such great banter, not just with Nasir, but also with the other characters. And also there was a lot of depth to his character. He was one of those characters that always had this sense of intrigue that made me want to keep reading. Question number 10 is what is a book that made you cry? And for this one, I'm gonna say Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng again because again that was such a cathartic reading experience for me and I think that is genuinely the most that I have cried while reading a book in so long. Question number 11 is what is the book that made you happy? And for this I have to say Mr. Loverman by Bernadine Evaristo. I have such great memories of reading that book. Not only is our main character Barry so hilarious but also Bernadine Evaristo's writing style takes these very heavy themes and kind of not really tones them down but presents them in a much more light-hearted and casual way than making these really intense and exhausting moments and I really liked that kind of play with writing style that we see in the story. Question number 12 is what is your favorite book to screen adaptation that you've seen this year and I actually haven't watched any book to film or book to series adaptation. I guess I could say Heartstopper but I haven't finished that tv series yet so I feel a little odd saying that. So I'm actually going to change this question to what is a book that I read this year that I'd like to see a screen adaptation of and for that I'm gonna say Gunkel by Stephen Rowley. Everything about this book made me feel like I wanted to see an adaptation of it. I could picture certain actors as the main characters. I could visualize these really detailed scenes and how they would play out and I think that that is one that I would love to see an adaptation of. Question number 13 is what is your favorite video that you filmed in 2022? And for this I'm gonna say my top 10 of 2021 video because I was not really that active in 2021 on my channel so this gave me a opportunity to talk about some of the amazing books that I read over the course of 2021 and it was really nice to get the opportunity to gush about some of those books. Question number 14 is what is the most beautiful book that you have bought or received this year? And for this I'm gonna say The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by Axie O. I think this is one of the most stunning covers I've ever seen. I love the color palette of this and also the detail in the little creatures and the world beneath the sea just stunning and I also really like the end papers in this they're also very detailed and while the main cover is pretty plain I do love this spine I think it's also really stunning and then one that has smaller details that I really love is Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thomas so not only is there this like glossy cover over the characters but there's so much detail in this figure called Lady Death who plays a very important role in the story and this really pretty spine and then on the back these are like raised details but the naked hardback of this is absolutely gorgeous the spine is also really cool and I love those little details because they all are a very significant part of the cultural elements that are discussed in this story and so that's why I love that they were included in the design details. Question number 15 is what books do you still need to read by the end of this year? So first I do still need to finish my reading women challenge which is a goal that I set for myself in 2022. I'm a little behind on that but I'm actually going to be doing a separate video talking about that and talking about how I'm going to be navigating that in the second half of this year. So be on the lookout for that. In terms of actual books on my shelves, I really need to finish the Shatter Me series by Tahara Mafi because I bought the box set of those and then I don't know if you can see they're right here. Um, I have only read the first book still. And I'd also really like to do a reread of the first two Graceling Realm books and then finish off that series. So this is a fantasy series that is written by Kristen Kishore and on my shelves here I think you can see I have Graceling and Fire which are the only two books in the series that I read. And now it's been so long that I really need to reread Graceling and Fire even though Fire is more of a companion novel. I really want to reread them both because I loved both of them and I want to continue on with the series. I'm not entirely sure if the new books carry on after Bitter Blue or if they connect fire more into this world or what exactly is going on in those but I do still want to read them. I may just read Graceling through Bitter Blue this year and then continue on with the rest of the series in 2022 but I at least want to definitely reread Graceling and Fire finally. Those are all the questions for the mid-year freakout tag. If you are watching this video consider yourself tagged if you haven't done it already and in the comments I'd love to hear what was your best and worst book of 2022. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and happy reading. Bye!